From Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is the Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, comedians Godfrey and Zane Lamprey. Plus, we'll do the news with Chris Loxamana. And now, the Jackie Robinson of white guys listening to the Black Information Network. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. No choice. We're going to make that you get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. Love that about you. Uh, Godfrey is uh, at the airport renting a car. He's going to be late. Max Pat is hanging in. He's got some news. Hello. We, we may shuffle the deck a little. Sure. Zane Lamprey is going to join us. Lamprey, I should say, is going to join us. I got plenty of stuff to talk about. I wonder if he was part of the Southwest debacle. Did you hear all their flights are grounded yesterday no. morning? No. Yeah, for hours. So they had like like seven over 1,700 flights that were delayed. Only eight of them were purely canceled, but yeah, they're grounded for hours. Why? A tech issue, they said. Oh, okay. Um, you Their know, stock is going down. I am. I you, you know, there, there's so there are things I have very strong feelings about, obviously, and then there are things I have a lot of uh, forgiveness for. And commercial flight is is one of those things I have a lot of forgiveness for. I I don't have forgiveness for kind of general waste and ineptitude and <laughs> stupidity, but I commercial airline flights. As I've said many times, like, you know, you show up and you, you're going to go to Newark from LAX and it's like, oh, it's a 40 minute delay. And everyone's like, oh, God. <laughs> First off, it's not your birthright to get to Newark from LA for $289 in five hours. It's, it's not your birthright. Yeah. It, it, people just think, like, well, I, I was born. So thus <laughs> I get to, I, I can globe trot the world for a pittance. And I should get everything. Yeah, this is affecting me, though. <laughs> yes. Their humanity has been around for a very long time. And if you looked at, you know, the Earth's calendar, it would only be the last three and a half minutes that we were able <laughs> to hopscotch the country, the world, and the globe for a relative pittance um, and, and with... And and with ease, comfort, safety, and speed. Yeah, it's a, already pretty much a miracle that we are doing this. Long journeys involve death and, and like disease and, and attrition. I you played know. Oregon Trail. Yeah, I mean, you're probably like, hey, if you got to get from California to Oregon or New York to Oregon, you go, all right. You know, they do it how they built skyscrapers and bridges in the 20s. They'd be like, all right, well, there's a 10% human loss that's acceptable right. like you'd factor in like here's how many people we're going to lose here's how, how how many how much livestock we're going to lose uh it's going to take seven months uh i hope we don't hit a snowstorm like going to the airport and being delayed flights i i get i get it's an inconvenience but it really falls under the heading of inconvenience it's it's not life-threatening it's not dangerous there's really Sometimes there's financial implications, but not usually. It just falls under the heading of inconvenience. Right. And I don't. I don't get why people, once they enter the airport, act as if it's not miraculous. What what's happening? It is miraculous. You're you're thirty seven thousand feet in the air. You're going five hundred miles an hour, and you can leave New York at uh, five. PM and be in LA for dinner with the time difference, of course, but that's miraculous. I, I, I don't, I don't get it. Then, then there's basic stupidity and waste and fraud and everything else. And it's sort of like you took your average Los Angelino. They would be much more upset over being stuck at Burbank airport for two hours than they would uh, the fact that uh, the state of California handed out $8 billion to, to convicts. M much more upset about waiting at the airport. Sure. It's it's the same mentality that doesn't give a shit and a half over some, uh, you know, party where some gangbanger pulled a gun out and shot eight people versus Cecil the line being shot or, or somebody kicking a dog and somebody filming it or something. Way more possessed by that 
it's it's it's, it's, it's a bizarre kind of inverted perspective, perspective yeah. priority thing. I think it's it's kind of chick related, oh. you know, but I feel like and also what we've really lost in today's society is um motivation. Like when you hear about some politician that's corrupt, you go, oh, he's trying to make money for him. Or you hear about some story about somebody trying to game the system or something. You go, okay. But Southwest Airline has no motivation for this. Their, their motivation is happy customers, on-time arrivals. Shit then happens, but it's not because – they're bad people. It's and and you can go, well, maybe they should have had their computers updated. Okay. But their motivation, right. if if you gave the CEO and the CFO of Southwest Airlines a magic wand and said, every plane will be on time, there will be no mechanical difficulties, there'll be no catastrophic difficulties, and everyone will be happy, they would go, Yes, a, a billion times over. Any business would. Yes. But- I wonder why then it's such a human tendency for us to need some sort of like controversy. Like back when this happened during the holidays, everyone thought, oh, they're short staffed and they're lying to us. Well, it was short staffed. It was also uh, a scheduling error, computer error that they should have updated and they didn't have a fallback plan. And so people couldn't get to work. Now, Ace, I, I, I appreciate and understand everything you're saying. But as someone who hates waste and stupidity and ineptitude, what if I told you that at least the Southwest shit that happened over the holidays was because of waste, stupidity, and ineptitude? And I don't know about this latest one, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's a if it's stupidity on their part again. Why does this keep happening to Southwest and no one else? I see. Here's the whole thing about waste, stupidity, and ineptitude. If you turn it toward your own organization, then you can still be all of those things, but you're not motivated toward those things. You know, I mean, you can, I mean, look, there's instances like when the Ford Pinto, it became clear that the fuel tank would be pierced by the rear bumper and collisions and the cars, people in the cars would be set on fire. I lost two friends that way. Robert Caceres and Leonard Ishu back wow. in uh, 1982. I've told you that story. I tell you, that? it's been a while. Have. Anyway, know. they were. Uh, That's something officially only an old dude would have. Someone who died in a Pinto wreck because of that. In a Pinto, no, no somebody. Oh yeah, in a, pi- in a in a Pinto, Pinto wagon. In a, yeah, not the regular Pinto, not the one you think of. Right. Um. Yeah. They. Uh, well. So. I'll circle back, but Ford, call them what you want. They want, uh, how much is it going to cost to settle up a handful of lawsuits versus how much is it going to cost to recall every Pinto and retrofit it? And then they made their business decision. Now, that may have cost Robert and Lenny their lives, But, and uh, I'd be definitely pissed if I was uh, the parents or uh, family member. But Southwest would like this not to happen, which is different than when politicians and government officials do things. I, I, I have much more hate in my heart for them. But, okay. Uh, Yeah, Robert and Lenny, guys from the football team. It's in my book. Two great guys. Um, Funny guys, Robert was an offensive tackle, maybe a defensive tackle too, and uh, Leonard was the kicker. And uh, they were best of friends, and I played with them for my uh, junior year, and then they went off, they graduated, and then they went off to uh, Northridge. And then uh, well, we kept in touch and, you know, very friendly. And uh, well, I, guess if, I guess if Godfrey's not going to be here, maybe there's time to recount this story because it just kind of keeps going. Um, then uh, they were going off to college. They were commuting together, like, you know, carpooling together. They're on the 405, came to a stop, got rear-ended, accident, pinned in the car, engulfed in flames, never got out. Horrible death. 
you know, 18, 18 and a half, 19, you know, probably 18 in change. Very haunting picture of them in the yearbook with their arms around each other on the sideline, the two of them, like they were posing for, for the, the memorial yeah. or something from nine months uh, earlier, both big smiles, with both arms around each other. Um, I walked into my second period class. It was during the season. It was the last game of the year. And um, I walked in, everyone's just sort of uh, hangdog, man. Everyone's head was down and they're grumbling and mumbling and no one was talking. And then I walked in, and I sort of looked at everyone just sort of staring at their lap. And I just went, who died? Oh, and then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And then uh, it's like, well, it wasn't a who, it was two that, that died. And then people looked at me and went, you didn't hear? Because uh, there's no uh, no tweets back then. You know, you didn't, right, yeah. you didn't hear you know? something. They, they died, you know, the following day or the day before or something like that. And took, took uh, a day for it to make it back to North Hollywood High. In 1982, uh, 81, late, late 81, because the end of the football season. And then um, I was like, oh, Robert and Lenny. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Because I really love those guys. And they're both fun. And they, they both had like, a sense of humor, which you didn't find so often on the football team. And then it was like, oh, we got our last game of the year. And we're going to dedicate it to Robert and Lenny. And um it was an away game, and it was um, when playing Monroe High, and they oh. had this big all-star running back named Owens or something, and we had to shut him down. And our team, everyone was injured because it was like the end of the – we didn't have our starting quarterback with like a third-string quarterback, and everyone was playing out of position. And You had nothing to lose at this point. <laughs> we had nothing to lose, and I just said, look, this is the last football game I'm ever going to play. I've been playing for 10 years. I told the coach, uh, we're switching up the defense. Like, there's this guy, Owens. He runs all over everybody. This is the only weapon they have. Um, we're, we're like one and seven or something at that point. Monroe's better. They're not heading to the playoffs. Um, so I go, look, uh, instead of this 4-4 shit we've been doing all year, which isn't, isn't working, there's a picture of Robert and Lenny. Very haunting, right? Yeah. Um, instead of that, uh, we're going with a 5-2 <laughs> or something. I just He's calling the shots. I've now. called the <laughs> shots. I, I just said, uh, we're going back to my Pop Warner football days. Oh, good. And Pop Warner football, all they did was run. They didn't do a lot of passing. It just wasn't, you, didn't, you had to stop the run. And I said, uh, I don't like being in the gaps. And I don't like playing linebacker with this defense. I, I, we'll, we'll go to five two, and we'll put we'll put a nose tackle, nose guard on the center, and uh, we're going to shut this Owens guy down. Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens. He was uh, on my. I think on the. I don't know if he got you know league player of the year or something, but on the. Um, my all valley team, he was the running back or one of the running backs. So. Anyway, on the offensive side. So I, I said, we're switching up the defense. We're putting a nose tackle in. The the, uh, the tackles are going to go head up on the defensive, ta- on the offensive tackles. We're going to shut this guy down. I may have even put myself at nose tackle. <laughs> and I'm like, here we go. And, uh, and we stuffed this guy. And, and we ended up hurting him. And he ended up leaving the game. And... We had no offense, and they had no offense. Now, before the game, Wendell Shirley, now possibly Wendell Shirley, who's captain at the Santa Monica PD or something now, came out to a show we did in Santa Monica a million years ago. Anyway, uh, one of the slower brothers on the team. So, but Like he, physically? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, mentally we're all slow, but physically not a speed burner. Uh, he may have been playing out of position too. So everyone was hurt, uh, but he announced he was gonna he was gonna return punts, punts and kicks, and then he announced he was gonna take one to the house for Robert and Lenny. Oh. And everyone just kind of looked down because he'd never taken one to the house. Yeah, he didn't really the have the speed to take one to the house, and 
he just had not been doing that all year. He didn't take him one to the house, much less, you know, punt return where he met over 12, 12 yards or something like that. But he said he's taking it to the house. All right. So now we playing our last game. This is the last football game I played in. Stuffed Owens, hurt Owens, got Owens out of the game. I think it was 0-0 for like the longest time. They they lost their best player. We had no offense to speak of. It was like a, a stalemate. And uh, he's the police chief in Bellevue, Washington now, Wendell. Um, so, Wendell Shirley. So, with not much time left in the fourth quarter, uh, they punted. And uh, and it went to Wendell Shirley. And, oh, they, I'm sorry. They were up 7 nothing the whole game. And they were up 7 nothing the whole game. And I, I, once we hurt Owens, then Owens was gone. And they couldn't do anything anymore. And uh, it's seven, se- up 7-7 seven, seven in the game we dedicated to Robert and Lenny. You know, people had black electrician's tape on their sleeves and stuff, you know, to commemorate them and the Pinto. And... Uh, the ball goes to Wendell Shirley, and uh, Wendell takes it to his house, true to the house. Wow. True, true to his word. <laughs> takes it all the way. Um, then uh, I remember I was snapping for the extra point for the, for the kick, and I was like, oh, man, let's not screw this one up because it's now 6-7. Yeah. We're playing for the Robert Lenny. The dedication's Lenny. there, yeah. Snap it, hold kick right through the uprights, 7-7 yeah. seven, seven tie. We kick off to them. They do a reverse on the kickoff. So they had no offense, so they had to they had to pull out. How much the, time left? The trickery. That was about four or five minutes okay. left in the game. They did a full reverse on the on the kickoff. That guy took it to the house oh. right <laughs> after Wendell took it to the house. We were all fucking demoralized, <laughs> and then the the game ended. And, you know, there's a couple of things you got to understand. In high school football, I played uh, offense, defense, punt, did the long snaps on the punt, and uh, punt return. Um, a lot of guys played two ways. Um, but for the kickoff, that's where the scrubs would go out because that's the only time those guys got playing time. Right. So you just take all the slow – Guys who couldn't tackle and go, you're on the kickoff yeah, team. Just be a body on the field. Just run down there and try yeah. to hit somebody. Well, they got lit up. They took it to the house, and uh, that was it. And then for our very last film session, so the, the following Monday was basically Mondays were film day. They filmed it on like a Super 8, you know, black and white from Even like up last, in the stands. Even on the last game, you would, have, you, go, you would all sit down and watch the film? It was, I think, the last time the team would be together. Oh, okay, so it was an excuse to get a- together. And we wanted to, as uh, is, is, is devastating as the loss was, we still all wanted to stand up and cheer when Wendell took it oh, to the house, yeah. you know? And... We were like, you watch the game on the film, but there's no sound, and it cuts to this. They stop in between each play, and then they start up again. Sometimes they start a little late or early or something like that. But we're getting to the part of the game where um, Wendell took it to the house, and you just saw the film start to get a little wobbly and a little gray, and it just ran out (laughs) just right when they were punting to Wendell. And then when the guy reloaded the film... It was us kicking the extra point. Yeah, it's lost. It was the one fucking play. I felt so bad for Widows. Like, it was the one play that, that was a good play you guys that entire night. This. We needed it gone. And uh, <laughs> that was the story of the Pinto and uh, Robert and Lenny. Oh, we have, uh, we have Wendell. What do we have? What do we have? News footage? Oh, that's Wendell Shirley. That's so close to being a, a Disney movie. Applause erupted inside Bellevue City Hall today as Wendell Shirley was sworn Wendell. in as the new police chief. But Chief Shirley says to hold the applause for now. There's a lot of work to get to. His priorities include public safety and addressing the rise in property crimes. He wants to utilize crime data to properly dispatch officers throughout the city. I will continue 
uh, to focus on crime reduction and That's quality him. of life issues with the three-prong approach called the PI, prevention, intervention, and enforcement. Chief Shirley had served as interim chief since his predecessor, Chief Steve Milet, left the department last August for a position in Ohio after serving as chief for six years. Shirley becomes the first person of color to be hey. appointed to chief of police in Bellevue. African-American boy born and raised in Watts, California, raised by grandparents, has been able to elevate to this position. So I understand the significance and hopefully it's used to inspire and influence others. Before becoming chief, Shirley yeah, served the Santa Monica, California Police Department for 26 years and actually retired back in 2019 but returned to public service, believing he could make a difference. After witnessing the nationwide protests over social justice and police reform. The true spirit of community policing, we need to listen, work with, and reach out to this community. And that's something I started from the moment I got here, and we will continue. As the top cop, Chief Shirley says he will embrace diversity, equity, and inclusion within in his day. department to make it reflect the country. In Bellevue, Brady Wakayama, King 5 News. Well, there he is. Yeah. I didn't. He's doing really well. I guess he was bussed in. So what we did is, uh, what, he grew up in South Central, which is not anywhere near North Hollywood High, but we needed skilled position players. Oh, the yes, skilled guys would get for... bussed in. Yeah, all the all the all brothers, the all the skilled guys got bussed in, and then the big dumb white guys blocked for them. Yeah, that was essentially um, the deal. So uh, I guess Wendell yeah. bust in, but he was always a good dude, and he was like you know tended class and didn't get into trouble, and you know had had his head on his shoulders. Still, probably his dreams about that footage being lost though. That that day, we're just oh my god. I, we got to get that guy. Scratching out. We got to get him wobbly. on the show because if I bring that up to him, he's going to he's gonna <laughs> flash cry. back. Yeah. He'll start crying. He, uh, you know what? Take his gun away first because he may start shooting it or turn it on himself. I, I don't know. It'll but be, he it's way worse if somebody else would bring that up to him, too. What's that? Because that, this is like something that maybe has been haunting him personally, but then having a guy that he hasn't talked to. I'm sure like, he has a woman going, everyone has forgotten about it, yeah. Wendell. That's long. That's ancient history. There's no way some douchebags are be talking about it on a podcast. It's 2023. Just relax. Just let it go. It'll be our little secret. That's why he became a cop? Yeah, yeah. You need to get it out of the system. Yeah, you better arrest that cameraman. Anyway, that was uh, that was a story of Robert issue, and then and Leonard, um, Leonard issue, and Robert Caceres, and then every we had to all go to their funerals. So the game was Friday night, and then Saturday was everyone's. Saturday and Sunday was everyone's funeral. Yeah. So then we had to all go to the fucking funeral. But do you think that Wendell Wendell would have scored that touchdown had your buddies not died in a fire? Like, did that? Did he get find that strength and trauma? Well, not based on his history of returning right. punts. I I was pretty dubious. <laughs> I actually, <laughs> we were like playing a scrimmage or something once with Wendell and some of the Wendell, whatever we called him back then. But we were playing on like seven on seven something before pads or something like that. And he kind of caught a pass and sort of broke away a little bit. And I chased him down and I'm not fast. So I it was stuck in my head. Right. Listen, my slow ass caught up to you. God knows what the Monroe defense is going to do to you. But uh, true enough, he, he took it to the house. Yeah. And then the game, yeah, must have ended up 14 to, 14 to 7. Yeah, that must be like a team's worst fear is uh, playing another team whose teammates have passed or their friends have passed, and now they're all playing for the memory of this person. They're all going to play harder. It was homecoming for the Monroe Vikings, too. They had a big cardboard Viking ship. They were pushing out, pretending to paddle and stuff. I remember it. You always want to beat that team on their homecoming oh, yeah. because that's the biggest attendance. I'm sure they circled us because you, you get the schedule, right? And you got to go, who would we like to play for homecoming? <laughs> you gotta go. Not Canoga Park. Yeah, which game will be our homecoming? Uh, Not Van Nuys. Van Nuys and Canoga Park are at the Coliseum in two weeks playing for the CIF championship. We're not gonna fucking 
get, they'll destroy us. We're not. We. Yeah. They What's definitely the got that back. Slow black guy. They got back to North Hollywood High, and they went uh, <laughs> Wendell Shirley, Adam Carolla. <laughs> yeah, circle it. That's homecoming. Yeah. Yeah. So they they knew what they were doing. You should be insulted, I think, if your team shows up and you're constantly playing in other teams' homecoming games. That yeah, the more away homecoming games that you play, the more away that, homecoming games sad. you play, the sadder the sadder your team. <laughs> I, I wouldn't I wouldn't really do the math at the time. I was just like, oh, it's homecoming, good, good crowd. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, now that was the worst. We lost and um, our coach Smith, Gary Smith. He, uh, I remember we was walking off the field and I was like, Ugh. and he just. He just kind of put his arm around me and he went, you deserve better, Adam. <laughs> I just remember going, yeah, yeah, I do. I like, think teachers I, should say that. <laughs> he was like, he knew I was going to be all valley. You uh, know what I mean? He's like, you're kind of playing with these scrubs. You know what I mean? Like he just said, you deserve better. He just like, right. you, you earned a better season than a whole yeah. bunch of fucking losses. Can't request a trade. Um, uh, Wendell might have gone by Kirk Shirley. Nope. Kirk Shirley was another brother that lived up the street that was a very exotic looking brother. I, and he may have like, he looked like half black and half Indian. And he had, you know, kind of crazy kinky hair and real dark skin and like a little bit husky. Does not sound like a Kirk, but sure. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Kirk Shirley's a different guy, but I remember bringing him over to my grandma's house once because we hung out. But it was back in the seventies, like the late seventies, when the only definition of attractive was skinny white dudes with blue eyes and blonde long hair. Like you had to be a surfer. That was that. That meant you were good looking. Like the industry standard for good looking was Robert Redford. That was it. Just white dude, blonde hair. And um, I brought him over and I introduced him to my grandma. And then, you know, at some point we left or something. My grandma's like, he's so good looking. Hmm. And I was like, he is? That no, guy? he's not. He looks weird, you know? And she's like, he's handsome. Now, he wasn't objectively handsome by any standard, culturally or not. I just think my grandma was like so progressive that she was like, I want to, I want to spread, <laughs> spread need, a little love to the community. You I know what I mean? To be on record. She never said that about yeah. any of my friends. And I had some good looking dude friends, you know, yeah. but she liked, uh, Kirk Shirley. Yeah. I don't know what any of those guys are doing, but all right, we will, uh, take ourselves a break. Maybe we'll get into some news. We'll see if, uh, sure. Zane is coming in early and we'll do all that right after this. Let me tell you about Simply Safe. Doing some spring cleaning, cleaning your house. Well, how about you protect your house with Simply Safe Home Security? Love these guys. Use these guys. Been a part of the family here for wow, one of our earliest sponsors. Seems like it's been over a decade now. 24 7 professional monitors. They use Fast Protect technology to capture critical evidence, verify the threat is real, and get your priority police dispatch right away. Cost under a buck a day, less than half of traditional home security systems. They have the, uh, you can lock and unlock your doors, and just do it all from your smartphone. Access your cameras, arm and disarm the system from anywhere. Customize your home's perfect system in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash Adam. Go today and get the free indoor security camera plus 20% off of your first order with interactive monitoring. That's Simply Safe, two eyes. Simplysafe.com slash Adam. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Ace man, Brian from Chicago. Heard you saying the other day on the show that frothers are pretty ubiquitous. I don't know, man. I think you might have been looking at that uh, Colt Roundup just a little bit too long. <sighs> Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888 634 1744. 
Yeah, after losing the game, I probably just came home to my garage and looked at Colt Roundup yeah. and sobbed openly. That explains the, the extra frothing yes. that, you, that you do in your adult life. Um, all right. Uh, here's speaking, something. Yeah. Oh, well, speaking of uh, you're talking about your uh, grandma or your mom, excuse me. Well, uh, Laszlo Gorog. I don't mm. know if you've heard this, that the mole people, they're remaking it with Robert Kirkman from The Walking Dead producing it. <laughs> That's cool. It is. It's always, I, I, it's sad. It's cool and it's sad because my grandfather, who fancied himself a writer, and he was a writer, and he wrote plays and short stories and poems and stuff, in Hungary, you know, in a coffee house below some building his parents yeah. owned. He's a real deal. He was an old school bohemian mm-hmm. and, of course, had to flee during World War II being a Jew and all. Uh, you know, came out here probably thinking he was going and then got n- nominated for an Academy Award for adapted screenplay or something for the affairs of Susan. At some point ended up having to having to take work and write the mole people. And, and other schlocky things that he, he probably and, wasn't that into. Oh. And now the only thing anyone talks about, if his name ever comes up, is the mole people. Yeah, it's like a band being known for their novelty song. Yeah, or maybe even a bad cover or yeah. something. But um, yeah, so bittersweet. Did you not like the mole people? Do you not like it? I don't think I've ever seen it. You've never seen it? I saw the poster. That sure. was enough. I, it was like a you know schlocky B movie from the fifties. Do you want to read you the logline? Yeah. All right. It's uh, nineteen fifty six. Archaeologists stumble into the underground lair of a race of darkness dwellers who can see in low light and have no pigmentation after being out of the light for so long. The high priest who rules the small pocket of mole people is threatened by the newcomers and wants them dead. Mm. Yeah, the 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 line for uh, many many movies is it, it always starts with an archaelogist, and then they <laughs> it was that for a way for Land of the Lost and yeah. stuff. They're looking around. Sure, we never find anything that lives. We find some cool stuff that lives under the sea, but we don't find anything that lives underground that's that's any good. But uh, we got the trailer for the mole people. Jesus Christ. By the way, it's featured heavily on like Mystery Science Theater and Svengoolie. They play it. They play it. It's like a cult classic. For I, a I, certain you know, fan it, base. It, look, the thing comes out in 1956. By 1985, it's long forgotten. Nobody gives a shit. It's a schlocky B film. And then at some point, things have this weird way of coming around. We're talking about 70 years later. I'm surprised nobody's reached out to you to comment on this movie or because if, if it definitely has legs, it's 1956 and people are still talking about it. And now they're, it's being remade by one of the biggest producers on, in TV history. Nobody ever reaches out to me for anything. I wonder if they even know to reach out. I, I don't know. It's <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> when, you know, we made uh, the 24 hour war, which essentially was Ford V Ferrari made the whole comprehensive doc on it. And then found out, you know, six months later, they're making a feature film right. on it. And we're like, well, someone's going to reach out to us because they're going to want to ask questions or have some right. storyline or something like that. At Maybe. least put your name in the special thanks at the never end. Never heard the from credits. anybody. Never made a Paul Newman doc. Never heard from a family member. <laughs> never family. Never. Nothing. Like, it, it's it's nuts. Somebody tweeted me the other day, like, you're uh Catholic little brother, Nate, where is he? Like, he reach out to you? And I'm like, never. Well, I am talking to the man show boy. So The guy I really, work out with you him. know the guy I think most you. about who doesn't reach out to me? I thought it was Nate. No. It was the guy who was working the drive through window at <laughs> Jack in the Box <laughs> when my buddy filled up his ass with uh, hose water and shot it out at him 14 right. feet. That guy, that has to be seared into that guy's memory. I've talked about that 35 times yeah. and put it in a book. Somewhere, somehow. And he has friends. He's probably dead. He that's probably the, that's took probably his the, own life. Or yeah. he's probably institutionalized. <laughs> yeah. All right. He probably doesn't have access to it. a phone. That did it. He's locked down Jeez. somewhere. He's walking. in a straitjacket in a padded room. 5,000-yard stare. 
<laughs> just keeps every time someone turns a sink on, he ducks and starts <laughs> crying. You know, when I remember water for let me draw you a bath. No. Yeah. You know, okay. We're going to go see this patient today. And I just got to tell you, do not turn your back on him or bend over. <laughs> yeah, Don't turn the <laughs> sink on either. So Netflix has this documentary series where they like go, th- they have all these. Wait, old- wait, the, the trailer for, uh, sorry, oh, yeah. the trailer for the mole people. I'm going to sound pretty dated. You did a screening of this movie. And, <laughs> yeah, and you're right. Over it. I, I don't know if it's. Yeah, I don't know when it becomes public domain, but uh, yeah. It's generally life plus 100. Oh, okay. So it wouldn't be yet. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Anyway, it's coming back. A little late for Laszlo. Hey, maybe there's a royalty check to hammer. Oh, I would have a God- Are you, You're in his will, right? I don't think he had a will. I don't... Uh, I don't know if my family... Well, I want I, all my I residuals to go to my grandson. If I got a goddamn check from anyone in my family, I would have a fucking heart attack. <laughs> I, all I do is write checks. Yeah. They only go one, one direction. <laughs> Nothing ever comes in. Yeah, your inbox is always empty. Yeah, this would... This would Upset a perfect record of, of nothingness. <laughs> my I uh, my grandfather died. My sister went over to the house and grabbed a couple of. Oh my gr- m- grandmother died. Her favorite pots. I have a paint of this like a painting they got when they're in Mexico. That's all. There's yeah. nothing. There there isn't any. Well, well, there's nothing because my grandfather died and everything went to my grandmother. And when I say everything, I mean practically nothing. But there's there's a house or two. But all of it. But all all, all of nothing. all of nothing went from my grandfather to my grandmother, and then my grandmother died, and all of her accumulated nothing. But there's still two houses that were shacks in in North Hollywood. But shacks in North Hollywood are 1.4 million bucks now. So then. All the accumulated nothingness went from my grandmother after she died to my mom. And then my mom died and whatever the accumulated nothingness, but some bucks because the house is worth something, went to my significantly younger stepdad. Ah. So Streak is still alive. alive. Sure. So now he has whatever whatever was, was left behind. Do you have do you have your affairs in order? I, a, yeah, I, I I have life insurance and and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah I have no I have no you idea, idea what, but whatever. Italians are going to be fighting for some yeah, cars. Blah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so the, uh, um, oh, that. by the way, this this movie. So there's a, in the new take that they're in the remake. It's going to be a woman. Oh, of course. And she travels to a town veiled in conspiracy to rescue her grandchildren from their father. And to do this, she must fight through hell in the underground tunnels where the mole people reside. So it's it's a there's a family familial element. Yeah, it. they always have to do that. Yeah, yeah. You have on to relate a, to it. On a uh, different note, I ta- I took my daughter and her friend to go see Luke Bryan yesterday at uh, Kimmel's. Country superstar. Great guy. Funny guy. He's been on the show, and he was really really nice. Yeah, he's a lively, really funny guy. And uh, brought him over to Kimmel's. Again, filed this under no way would I've ever done this when I was a kid. But uh, she found out he wanted, you know, she wanted to go meet him. And then I was like, okay. And then uh, she's going to stagecoach and he's headlining. And so we wanted to go say hi. And wow. Wow. Right. <laughs> what, a, so, what a life. She gets her friend and uh, we go over there and we get all the, the, the Kimmel group takes care of me nicely. I got all the passes and the parking and the lanyards and everything. And so we go over there right as we're walking in the back, run into Luke and his guys, talk to him for a minute, have that discussion right. and go backstage and hang out. Uh, he goes and does his thing that they take their pictures. And uh, then we go into his uh, dressing room afterward and have a big conversation with uh, him about cars and music and everything else. And uh, my daughter's having a great time. And then, then we go home. And what does she say to him? I mean, she's meeting this guy who's headlining the festival that her friends are going to this huge 
festival. What, what like? Does she she says, can you shoot a video for my friend who's the <laughs> hugest fan of yours? Just say uh, hi to uh, Shelly or something. And he really? hands him and he's got to go, hey, Shelly. Yeah, look, <laughs> Happy listen, birthday, Shelly. file it under every adult has to dance for everyone under 20 now. That's, <laughs> he put him right to work. And so he had to cut a, a you know bespoke video for for her. Right. So that it's, she can share that with the friends. It's no cameo. longer the experience. It's the documentation of such yes, experience. Yes. And also, it struck me that, and I don't know, but you guys tell me what you think of this, but I used to interview bands all the time and not so much country artists per se, but but I would on occasion, but, but a lot of bands. And the people that I had to interview had to had were edgy, had an attitude. There was it was rock and roll, right? And, and they had or, to play the role and or the and or punk rock, and they would come into Loveline and be some of the worst fucking interviews you've ever heard in your life. Like couldn't get a word out of them. Had people get up and leave. Like just fucking hated interviewing most of these guys i, I you think this is honest this is a le- legitimate thing or they're just like i don't know the british bands were the worst uh, blah, and all those those bands are all the worst i remember I, the I, darkness walked out the darkness walked out i the cowboy cowboy junkies were horrible chumbawamba was horrible like they're all horrible i hated interviewing these guys and it was always like Ugh. and then it'd be the punk band or it'd be some british band and, and it was just like it was, it was like pulling teeth. Yeah. And then at some point, I was like, wait a minute, everyone's nice now. Like everyone, you know, Luke Bryan's up there laughing his ass off with Kimmel, making jokes, hanging out with us. And I'm like, yeah, all the bands that come through here now, they're, they're self-deprecating, they're interesting, they're funny, they're open. And something changed. And it's not just like I got better at interviewing, which I did, but there's a big difference. And I think I, that's what the people want more. Somebody too. told them, drop the attitude. Yeah. Like you cannot show up in costume. You have to be accessible. You have to come across as likable. Like you're, they're going to take this. They're going to share it. They're going to talk shit on the internet if you don't do it. Right. And, and, and it all just went away. It all just went away. I haven't, I haven't talked to a band with an attitude in a million years. Right, like like Machine Gun Kelly looks like he should have some sort of attitude. That's kind of the way his pictures go and some of his music, sure, whatever. But then he goes on Jackass and is like joking around with the guys. And you like, oh, never, yeah, okay. you never saw that side of the artist. It was all attitude back back in the day, and now it's like <laughs> that'd be terrible to interview. Those oh guys. my god. You'd, I'd have to interview, you know, the guys from Black Flag or because they have to play the part. Their image is also they're they're it's part of their act. Oh God, I used to go, I used to go. God damn, please no bookings, like please no bands, please no bands, unless John Popper came in. I was yeah. like, all right, that's good, but um, now and they'd have the worst attitudes and they'd be the worst, and I've just always would hope they they left and. You know, famously, the only thing you could set your watch on over there on Loveline is is if I ever hoped someone didn't show up or left or they threatened to leave, they never left. <laughs> that was, uh, <laughs> what was his name from, is it Soundgarden? No. Uh, Allison Chains. Allison Chains. Lane Staley. He committed suicide, right? I think he OD'd. Oh, maybe he OD'd, sure. right. I'm look back. So then his lead guitarist came in. Uh, we'll just walk Jerry down. Jerry Cantrell. Jerry Cantrell, maybe, yeah. Just take a walk down memory lane. Let's tell stories I've told before, but so what? He came in and he just goes, no talk about Lane. And I went, well, we take phone calls, so. Yeah. And he went, yeah, well, I can't have that. And I said, well, look, we're rock and roll station. I mean, we're new, new wave, whatever. We played your band. We played your band for years. And uh, those phone lines are going to light up from all over the country. And pe- there's a good chance someone's going to have a question. And he's like, well, then I can't do the interview. And I was like, I totally understand. 
thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Please leave. Please. Please. Because oh, A, I don't want to interfere your, your, yeah. your ass. And then secondly, what if somebody does call? Right. I would just get Ray like, hey, call into the show and yeah. ask him about Lane. And he's like, if, if you can't guarantee me this, then I'm leaving. And I'm like, well, as much as uh, I'd like you to stay, I cannot make that guarantee. So we do appreciate you coming out tonight. <laughs> and he walked out. And then like 10 minutes later, he's like, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> he came back and sat down. And I was like, no. <laughs> I don't even remember what happened after that. But I remember praying, praying he left. Yeah, the he, autopsy says that he died from a speedball overdose. Yeah, in 2002. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get a little news in before, uh, before we get going. All right, sure. So Menudo's in the news, the band yeah. Menudo. You know, we talk about them all the time. Horrible well, interview. <laughs> So what what happens is there's this new documentary or docu series coming out three part series, and in it, um, one of the singers of Menudo, Roy Rossello, he alleges that he was drugged and raped as a teen by the Menendez brothers' dad, Jose. Yeah. So yeah, so this is going to be a Peacock docu series called Menendez plus Menudo: Boys Betrayed, and I mean re- remember the the brothers they're convicted. For life, they're, I mean, they're sentenced to life in prison for, from the 1989 murders of what's it 89? Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, for the and they they uh, shot both the parents, um, shot Jose point blank in the head while Kitty, for uh, 15 gunshot wounds, including one to the face. And they said, "Hey, we were sexually abused at the hands of our dad. This was self defense." And the judge said, "Inadmissible, irrelevant." You're going to jail. Yeah. You're going to prison for this life. This is one of one of the many, many things that the world disagrees with me about, but I've been talking about for 20 years. Is like, I don't want the Menendez brothers in prison. I don't care about them being in prison. And I've said this many times. Um, if on any given evening, Natalia walked into Sonny's room and said, uh, I'm thinking about uh, getting a shotgun and killing mom and dad while they watch uh, Dynasty on Sunday night and eat ice cream. And Sonny said, this Sunday or <laughs> about the following Sunday? Sure. I'd go, well, we have fucking failed as a parent. Yeah, there's something, I, something going on We here. did something horrible as a parent because both of them agreed. You know what I mean? They're both, you know, 18 or 19, whatever. And Sunday, they're... Yeah. So they, you'd, I, I would have to believe that Sonny would go, oh, come on. Remember he took you over to the uh, Luke Bryan thing over yeah, at Kimmel's a couple of years back? Like, yeah, I I drove Natalia home. I said, I, I don't want any shit where you're sitting in your therapist's office in 13 years going, my dad never did anything. All he did is sit in his office minor. and watch TV. <laughs> I said, mark the twine. <laughs> mark this date. I worked all goddamn day today. Drove back to La Cunada. Picked your guys up on record, and yeah. drove back to the El Capitan Theater. That's that's what I did. So when you're saying all he did was sit in his office and watch TV and complain about red turn arrows, <laughs> <laughs> remember <laughs> this date. So both agreed to do it. Yeah. Also, um, nature or nurture. It's on. It's on the parents. As I've always said. But I here's here's the thing about our system. We have a system where if there's some lunatic who's running around, you know, he's got like, you know, the guys with the rap sheets now, L.A., Chicago, Baltimore, whatever. This guy, in, you know, 2007 was charged with aggravated assault. And then 2009, he was charged with trying to sexually attack a woman who was jogging in the park. And then uh, 2014, he pistol whipped a liquor store owner over a dispute over a Slim Jim. I'm like, these are the dangerous people. Now, that guy rolls right out of the system. Right. And if that guy is convicted of pushing a random commuter onto subway tracks and killing them, after that guy's in prison for about 20 years, the powers that be will be upset that he's not paroled. They'll go, come on, he spent enough time in there. You know, the, the, all the rando violent people, after about 20 years in, like, you got to let the guy out. He did that thing uh, 22 years ago or whatever. The people that commit crime, the sort of 
home crime, mm-hmm. you know, this sort of domestic stuff. What is their recidivism rate? Like, what do you think the Menendez brothers are going to do? They're going to get out and go on a fucking crime spree? Are, are they ever going to just be walking down yeah, they New were York and just punch a, a rabbi or something? Like, you think they're going to push anyone onto the track? No, they'll sit courtside at a Knicks game. They'll and, sit courtside yeah. at a Knicks game. And, and marry a, a, a chick who was on a Dancing with the Stars season 17. Like, that's what they're going to do. They're not going to do anything. Right. I, I couldn't imagine them going on to a life of crime. So if the thought is we will let people out of prison at some point, even if they've murdered somebody, wouldn't you? And the Menendez, uh, the Menendez been in for 33 years or something, right? Wouldn't you, who would you rather? All right. Who would you rather be your new neighbor? One of the Menendez brothers after they're paroled or the guy that just broke into the elderly woman's house when he was 19 and stabbed the shit out of the woman in bed 27 years ago. I'll like, take Lyle Menendez. I will take Lyle Menendez for the win, bitch. Yeah. That's so, it. Uh, let him out or or let nobody out. Well, because if you're not letting them out, then you shouldn't let anybody out. Yeah. Now. What do you think the DA? What do you think uh, Los Angeles DA? You think he'd be a strong proponent for letting out the Menendez brothers, or would he be cheering for the guy who stabbed the elderly woman? It's usually whatever the opposite you want, Adam. That's <laughs> exactly what it is. Yeah. So this uh, this docu series, it also it's claiming that this could reopen the case. Good. Let him out. We'll um, be a guest on the show. So we'll bring yeah. him in here with Wendell Shirley. Here's here's a quote from Eric, now fifty two. He says, it's sad to know that there was another victim of of my father. I always hoped and believed that one day the truth about my dad would come out, but I never wished for it to come out like this, the result of trauma that another child has suffered. And let me take it a step further. What if this was a case, little thought experiment? What if the case was, uh, was it Jose? Yeah, Jose's dad, yeah. Jose Menendez. What if the case was... He molested Cain Velasquez is, uh, or somebody, you know, some story. And he doesn't have to be an M- MMA fighter. But what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, is there is that story with Garagos. But what I'm saying is, is thought experiment. What if the dad of the Menudo band member showed up and shot him? And he said, you molested my son and you're not going to molest anyone else's son. And, they sh- and he shot him in cold blood. That guy would get manslaughter, maybe murder too, or something like that. Yeah, you can't it, shoot it, people. It, it be, it, you can't shoot people, but would he be in prison for the rest of his natural life, uh, or would we parole him after 12 years with good behavior? Because we would be sympathetic. Yes. We'd go, that is the dad of a 14-year-old boy that this monster... Uh, molested, and this is just a little frontier Any justice. Any parent would do that. Right. They go, I'd do it if he did my yeah. shot. I wouldn't care how long they lock me up. By the way, people talk a pretty good story. I would not do that. <laughs> I, <laughs> Sorry, li- Sonny. I like my freedom. <laughs> but, um, all right, so with that in mind, then what if the boy who was molested, the, the, the Menudo singer who was molested, shot him? He'd get the same treatment, probably better yeah. than the dad would, right? We'd go, he'd get this a movie made a about him. He'd, he'd be a hero. He was traumatized. Yeah. All right. So then when you molest your son, why can't your son shoot you? Uh, he has right. just as much right in the courts or whatever. He should get the same punishment that if the Menudo kid shot him. Right. What do you, do you think it was just because of the method of murder? What if they poisoned him? It was the it's, method of murder, and they went out on a shopping spree mm-hmm. afterward. The optics were bad. Like they were traveling around Beverly Hills buying, you know, Gucci shit and and, stuff, and, yeah. and jewelry and stuff. There was there was a component of like there was a component of uh no remorse. No remorse, frivolous spending. Sure. They only did it to get the money, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then the other aspect of it is 
molestation and that kind of stuff, it, it was not nearly the deal it is now. Now it's a big ass deal. Right. Back then it was like, yeah, he diddled you, but that didn't give you the right to. Now you grab a woman on the shoulder and it's sexual assault, you know? So it's like we have upped the game big time in the assault and molestation department. So if that happened this year, we'd be much more sympathetic to the boys and we would believe them. Right. Yeah. We didn't. Cultures changed. I've said it many years. Every man needs to be believed. Was it every woman that- needs to be believed? <laughs> yeah, I'm switching. I'm flipping the script. Right. I'm now going. Every man needs to be. Believed. You know what I'm curious. You should. You should tell because I doubt. Son, maybe Sunny might know. I doubt Natalia would know this story and just tell her the story as if it were today and see who she sides with. I don't want to plant any seeds. <laughs> we're getting along pretty good right now. Sure. Stagecoach doesn't go as planned. Oh yeah. I don't yeah. give her any reason. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. What kind yeah. Of, what kind of gun was it? So let him out. Or just let them out because they've been in for over 30 years yeah. now. Yeah. I or mean, let nobody out. That's <laughs> which it. Could, which could happen, which most likely will happen. The Yeah, so they're serving out their life sentences at the Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility in San Diego. And I was thinking, you know how pedophiles, molesters, if they go to prison, they're most likely to get mm-hmm. be the ones that are they're killed or roughed up by the fellow prisoners. That one, especially if they molest kids, right? That's also, like a thing. now... He killed a rich molester dude. Like, he was very yeah. affluent, the dad, you know what I mean? We would have much less sympathy for right. the deceased now, but go ahead. Yeah, so, but Eric and Lyle are the exact opposite of that. So when they go to the prison, are they are they lauded? Are they are they running things, you think? Mm. Like, how, they, they, how are they in prison? They probably they probably have networked pretty nicely. They've been there for a while. You know, uh, I can't remember. There was a lot of talk about one of them wearing a toupee during the trial. I, I, I never figured that one out. I guess it was uh, well, one of them. Yeah. Can't remember which one. I'd be fine with these guys being out. Just get them out. I think they've been married from in there. I don't know if you get I'm conjugal. I'm saying yes, they are, they are married. Conjugal visits. I don't know if they get podcasts. If they do. They, I'm going to tell them I'm going to be at the Solana Beach at the Belly Up. That'll be June 4th. And if you guys can get yeah. paroled by then, I'll, uh, I'll reserve a table <laughs> for you. I don't know. So in my world, I have no problem with these two guys, but I have tons of problems with crazy homeless people just stabbing women who work at the at Melrose uh, Boutique. Yeah. And those are the most dangerous people on the planet. The rando crime people are the most dangerous people on the planet. The mobs that just attack the people in the cars and start stomping on the windows and pulling them out of the cars. The most dangerous. The most dangerous. Uh, I'll give you a good example in Los Angeles. You ready? I think I can tie this whole thing together. Ben, are you near a computer? Okay. Uh, Look up Damian Football Williams. Okay, because about the time the Menendez brothers were killing their parents, the L.A. riots went down. (coughs) L.A. riots, 90? 92. 92, was it? My prom was canceled. Oh, Oh, that's how you know. In fucking... It it was supposed to be in San Francisco. Oh, okay. The the riot spread. It was nowhere near what it was in... In L.A., in the Bay Area. But there was shit going down in Oakland and SF. All right. So, 92. And what year did the Menendez brothers enter prison? Because if they shot them in 89, could have taken... It took a while. 96, they were subsequently sentenced to life in prison. So, they weren't in until 96. Yeah. Really? That's what it says. I feel like that's that's too long. I know. It does seem long. 89 was the murder. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, they were sentenced to life in 96. Does that seem like it was a seven-year trial? No. I, yeah, they first didn't. It, I think it took them a year or so to catch them. Not They weren't looking for them, but right. to haul them in. Right. Still earlier than 96. 96 after OJ? What? All right, anyway. Yeah. Someone will look it up. Here's my point. You ready? Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Um, these guys killed their parents. Uh, during the L.A. riots in 1992, shortly after they killed their parents, and we still got to find the date they were originally, originally arraigned or whatever because it's got to be before 96. But about the same time the L.A. riots were going on, uh, Damian Football Williams caught up to a guy who was driving a gravel truck, stuck. And the most terrifying thing in the world is you're stuck in your car and the mob drags you out of your car and tries to beat you to death. Terrifying. Uh, pulled the guy out of the uh, Reginald Denny, the truck driver, the white truck driver, pulled him out of his truck, dragged him to the ground, the mob driving around, and then he picked up a cinder block and threw it at his head and smashed his head. Now, he didn't he didn't die, although he should have died, but he was brain damage and destroyed. He and then like did a victory dance, you know, after throwing a brick, a, a cinder block on this guy's head. Um, so he, Damian Football Williams, is much fucking scarier than either one of the Menendez brothers because if the shit went down, I don't think Lyle Menendez would drag you out of your Prius and throw a cinder block at your head, right? right? So as a citizen of Los Angeles, I fear the Damian Football Williams of the world and not the Menendez of the world. I don't condone what either one of them did, and I probably wouldn't want to hang out and have a beer with any of them. But in terms of living in the city, who would you rather have running around? Uh, Damien Football Williams pulled Reginald Denny out of the truck. Uh, I can't even watch it. It's gruesome. Lifted a cinder block over his head, smashed, it threw it down, smashed him in the head with it. Uh, got caught, got sentenced to not that much. Uh, got out, had, uh, oh, Maxine Waters was a fan of his and oh. uh, said a few good things about I'm the man. Sure. And then he got out the and then I believe he killed somebody. And now he's back in. So who needs to be in prison more? What was his, what was that story? Well, he was eventually convicted of four misdemeanors and simple mayhem in that. Uh, he served four years of a 10-year sentence. But then after his release, he was arrested and convicted for his role in the 2000 murder of a drug dealer and sentenced to 46 years in prison. But I bet he'll be out before the Menendez brothers are. <laughs> so, yeah, you got to find out what Maxine Waters had to say about, about him. She said something about him. But anyway, that's the most dangerous element of society because Damien Football Williams was just walking around yeah. And saw traffic back up and then went and wilded on this guy's ass and tried to kill him. Simple man. With a cinder block. Yeah. And also, here's the whole thing, too. You shoot someone seven times to throw a cinder block on their head after pulling them out of their truck. Miraculously, the person doesn't die. What's the difference between murder and miraculous? Right. You know what I mean? You did everything you could to murder. You just weren't very good, weren't good at, at what at you were yeah. doing. I, I'm, if I'm a judge, I'm like, that's could have died, could have not died. should mean everything <laughs> yes. in something like that. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll maybe have some guests, and we'll get into more news, and we'll figure out this Damian Football Williams thing right after this. Well, we got a dream matchup between two undefeated superstars, the power of Javante Tank Davis against the speed of the king, Ryan Garcia. These guys are two of the most popular boxers out there because they go toe-to-toe -to -toe and they trade and they're aggressive and they're dynamic and they're colorful personalities. I mean, someone's always got to go, people. You take these two guys' records, you put them together, you're at 51 wins, zero losses. So somebody's going to have a W. No, an L. Or wins this fight is going to be the king of the ring. So don't miss the boxing event of the year. Davis versus Garcia, plus three more bouts live on pay-per-view Saturday, April 22nd. Just go to sho.com slash ppv to order now. And now Alcoa presents Definitely Not a Jew! On the Adam Carolla Show. 
Dateline, Woodbridge, Maryland. A 40-year-old man assaulted a 26-year-old Papa John's employee in a dispute about pepperoncini. He assaulted the employee with a metal pizza paddle. Definitely not a Jew. Well, Godfrey's 14 minutes away, which will lead me into something. But Damien Football Williams and uh, Maxine, Maxine Waters. Waters. Oh, yeah. Um, she is a fucking full-blown kook that, uh, again, do not think this is recent uh, politics. I did Bill yeah. Maher politically incorrect with her, 2099, returned back to Loveline and announced she was insane. Yeah, After she's on your Mount Rushmore, her. huh? Of along with but Gavin Newsom, she well, Lawrence. she's a little she's a little different. Gavin Newsom is calculated and kind of a liar and a bit of a sociopath. I mean, the people that that live quote rent free in your head. Yeah, she is. She's a <laughs> babbling fool. She's she's made it into she's Maisie Hirono. <laughs> nuts you know what i mean just she she falls under the heading <laughs> of my mom's friends like just fucking babbling bitch stupid doesn't say anything i but mean macy's she's, a little it's, it's confusing well Maisie is not is dumb so she's it's, super dumb she's a i don't know rep senator from hawaii or right. something she's just she's just dumb like when you hear her talk Confu uh, yeah she just sounds okay. patently stupid um maxine waters is a little more sociopathic i see i i would say but 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 kind of dizzy and whacked out and nutty too. But and these people can never leave. They can never leave. They just sail on. They, you're going decade number five of them making policy. Like it doesn't. They just never go anywhere. Yeah. But she had some comments with him about him. But anyway, uh, Menendez let him out. Damien Football Williams keep him right. in. And by I, the way, I see this docu series. We did let him out, and he killed somebody. Right. Yeah, we were we've what been a, burned. <laughs> what are the chances the Menendez, Damien Football Williams went in, came out, and killed somebody who would still be alive if he didn't get let out in Los Angeles? So what are what are the chances the Menendez would kill somebody else? Anyway, the system well, the system's been fucked up for a while, especially here in Los Angeles. I don't know, Maxine Waters, there's some I'm clip somewhere. I'm finding that she em embraced him. There's reports that she <laughs> embraced him. Yes, she's a fan. Yeah, so Godfrey's 14 let minutes me, away. Yeah. Let me, let me, again, can I tell, can I reiterate once again <laughs> Please. my white privilege? Oh, boy. If a white dude pulls a dude out of a truck and tries to stomp him to death, w when he gets paroled, we don't have to hug it out. Because we're both white. Uh, Maxine Waters is black. Damian Football Williams is black. They have to. Yeah. They have to be praised. See, my privilege is gone. I don't have anything to do with that guy. Yeah. That's I don't. the real that's the real privilege. Oh, Too yeah. bad. You don't have that. I don't. No. no. I'll, I'll hug I'll hug any Filipino. Murder. No, they, I um Mark Gergos has to love all Armos. Yeah. I know when, it's, it's when Manny Pacquiao came out say you know, saying like oh, I don't I don't believe in gay people because of my religion. Like I don't support them. People would come up to me like, "Chris, what do you have to say about that?" Uh, what do you like? I don't, I don't know. Shit. Dark days at the Max <laughs> yeah. Apata household. Oh. Yeah, those are rough Thanksgiving. All right. So is Zane Lamprey here? He is here. All right. Well, we should yeah. uh, see about rolling rolling him into this. I don't know what. I don't know if we do news. I don't know what else. What else we have? But Maxine and embrace Damien football in between. Trying to kill the guy with the cinder block and murdering the other guy was it the little break in there where she they hugged it out? Is that uh, that sound I about right? Hey Zane, 2017, I think. Hold on. All right, we'll figure it out. Zane Lamprey is uh, joining us. Zane Lamprey's here. <laughs> oh my god, I love that guy. He's he scared crazy. me. Uh, Zane has uh, got shows, Huntington Beach, Golden Road Brewery. Oh yeah, the brewery tour. Kicking off the Thirsty Tour, May 16th, performing at breweries all over the country. But the one in Huntington, he's taping a special. Yeah, that's yes. for my Amazon Prime special. Nice. Yeah. 
Uh, so, yeah, I'm shooting my second Amazon Prime special at Golden Road in Huntington. There's one close by There's here, right but they here. don't have the space. So we're shooting it down there. And then I've... I've been doing my stand-up at breweries since the pandemic, so I've done 232 of them uh, since, like, June 3rd of 2021. Right. And now this year, I've done about 20, and then I'll have, I have about 100, uh, 100 more shows, all at breweries. Yeah. It's, it's been it's been amazing, actually. I yeah. want to ask about, like, the beer culture, because, I mean, breweries have been popping up yeah. in the, over the last, what, decade and a half? There and- is a brewery in every nook and cranny, every single town. If you're like, I want to do a show in this town, it, they have a brewery. It's just a, <laughs> it's just a matter of, like, can they fit? Like, no, they're not really made for stand-up. So sometimes I'm out in, like, the, you know, the storage room or the brewery itself, or sometimes they have space, because right. we're trying to, to make it sense for me, I have to have at least, like, 200, 250, you know, 300 people. So not always can they do that, but there are breweries everywhere, and the community, like you're, like you're saying... That's the magic of, of all of it. Is, does beer have to be? It can be made anywhere, right? It's not like a vineyard where you have to Correct. be to have the right kind of weather or something like that. Yeah. So, but I mean, I, of course, in California, we have a ton of them here. Portland has a bunch of micro breweries. But the uh, I have a question about the IPA. Okay. Because I feel like the IPA's PR is or their public image is lowering. Like I, hundred yeah. percent. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I love an IPA. At one point, it was how dank and and just like bitter can you make this IPA. And then there was the there was the IPA, and then there was the West Coast IPA, which yeah. was kind of like, and then there was even like the San Diego IPA, which was even like just like even more hoppy, bitter, and yeah. yeah. And then everyone's just like, uh, I, "Can we just? I, we I can't handle this anymore." A little, yeah. And now, and I saw it coming a mile away, but I wasn't. There's no way to hedge a bet on this, but like for me, it's like I, I knew that loggers were coming. I knew that loggers because. People don't always want to go into a brewery and just sip on like syrup and have something heavy that they need to think about and identify. Sometimes you just want to sit there and have a beer. Yeah. And a lager, you can sit there. It's not like seven, eight, nine percent ABV where you have to worry about getting tanked. You can just sit there, enjoy yourself, and kind of go about your day. Uh, here's a question: People like altering themselves. Okay. But they don't really like the baggage or the judgment that comes along with the okay. alterations. Okay. I don't know where we're going yet, but I'm on board with you. <laughs> <laughs> and so we figured out a few things. Okay. Like we invented the mimosa. Okay. Because white chicks like to get ripped at 11 in the morning mm-hmm. on a Sunday. But mm-hmm. if you pulled out a flask, you would be you would be oh, judged. Yeah, sure. But, yeah. but we have a bottomless mimosa. Sure. So you can catch your sort of sanctioned buzz. Yeah. You know, the. There's dirty booze out there. That's... Yeah, when you think about a Bloody Mary. There, no, I've never seen anyone drink a Bloody Mary at 9 30 in the evening. Right. That's right. It's, it's a. It's a drink that is made for people who would like to catch a buzz mm-hmm. at an airport mm-hmm. and not be judged at 7 15 in the morning. And not actually be sitting there having an actual shot of vodka. Yeah, like if you were because that, because let's be honest, that's what you're doing. You're you're using this as a vessel to get a shot. Inside yeah, it's you. a delivery system yeah. <laughs> for it's it's basically a coyote and the the tomato juice is the van yeah. that you're stuffed into. Right. But you really want to get that vodka. That's right. That's right. But the optics of you sitting there just that's sipping right. off a uh-huh. vodka. Th- okay. Now there's a sort of pot version of this. Okay. Where people like to get baked all the time, uh-huh. but they realize. The optics of just sitting around getting stoned look bad, so we kind of turned it into a culture, and then you can go to a place, and they go, well, what do you want to do? You feeling creative? You, you, you surround yourself with enablers, basically. Yes, yeah. yes. And then right. and then they start telling you what the pot's going to do for you. Mm-hmm. I just feel like I'm high all the time, yeah. but this pot, this is yeah. good if you're into macrame. Yeah, and this one, <laughs> that's, you right. that's you, right. You want to write, you want to create. Yeah. You said, yeah. I got this strain mm-hmm. over here, or are you feeling a little anxiety? Yeah. And it's basically, I want to mm-hmm. get fucking buzzed. Yeah. I want to get high, want to and or I want to get drunk yeah. at LAX at 930 in the that's morning right. without judgment. Mm-hmm. The brewery kind of seems like a version of that I which see. is I want okay. a sanctioned buzz. Uh-huh. <laughs> like That's right. if if I I if I walk into a fucking TGI Fridays at one o'clock on a Thursday mm-hmm. and just start pounding cold ones, people yeah. are gonna be like, that's yeah, your your fucking father. Yeah, that's right. You're out of control. <laughs> right. But I go, I'm going to the brewery, and they got a flight. Yeah, you know, and I'm well, sampling if you're, if you're gonna play some different giant stuff. Jenga. You're you're like you can do anything you want. 
Yeah, they're you know getting, I mean? they got some new stuff. They got some strains and and uh, different stuff that yeah. they're wanting me to. Take, and all you're doing is getting buzzed. Yeah, is there an element of that? A sanctioned buzz. So that's a very good observation. So it's it's the difference between like a bar. And there's a bunch of differences between bars and breweries. One is to a brewery, you can bring your children, you can bring your dog, but uh, but more often than not, the the other thing is the owner is often the brewer, but the person who either owns the place or made your beer is quite often on site and can like talk to you about it. Yeah. And so you're right that you're kind of changing the image of like, if, look, I just want to get a little bit of a buzz. But if you go there with your dog and your baby and you're talking to the owner, then maybe it doesn't feel as dirty as if you're doing it at a bowling alley at one o'clock in, in the afternoon. Yeah, like if the dude at the LAX airport bar would talk to you about your glass of Smirnoff yeah. vodka right, and just right, right, go, right. Smirnoff's actually a company that's over 150 years old, yeah, and right. uh, a, a lot of people think bit. it's uh, potato based, but it actually. And yeah, then you right. just sit there and drink your, you fucking get buzzed, yeah. but mm-hmm. it'd be a sanctioned buzz. We're mm-hmm. all going to the same place. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. Our destination is the same. You can take whatever transportation well, you want. Yeah, like one is jump on a bus. Uh, and beeline it to Buzzed Town. Yeah. The others jump on a bus and head to Buzzed Town, but you have S- Julie McCoy going, if you look to your right, you'll see there's a Civil War graveyard. <laughs> you go, oh. But meanwhile, you're just hauling ass to Buzzed Town. Yep. I, Sanctioned bus I ride, say this though. on stage. I say that that shots are their super highway to that little town of regret. They will all get to. But if you're doing shots, you're just getting there a lot quicker than, than the rest of us. Right. So breweries are, is a sanctioned bus. <laughs> yeah. exactly right. It is the museum of 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 uh, of booze of watering holes, basically. Yes. So what gave you the idea to? Oh, you wanted a sanctioned bus, maybe. Ah. Well, I'll tell you what. When I was coming out of like the pandemic, so we're talking the end of 2020. I was trying to book this tour before that. When I was coming out of 2020, I was trying to book theaters uh, of all different sizes, and they were they would not open. They didn't know when they were going to open. Some of them said in 2021, we don't plan on opening at all. And I was like, I, this is my livelihood that I wasn't able to do last year. And so... I was like, let me just call breweries. I think that breweries could use a little bit of a help because, look, I, I get the door. They get they get the bar. They get the beer sales. And quite frankly, when one of my shows happens, they'll do three to four X of what they would normally do on that night sure. because we, you know, it's fun. You're at a party. The stand-up show is like, it's not just shut up and listen. You're You're part of it. You, you, we're having a good time. I'm encouraging people to get up during the show, go get a beer. And so, like, I started reaching out to the breweries, and they were so excited about it. And then they would tell their their other brewery friends. And then before you know it, I have, like, you know, I think this year, uh, I I would say 90% of the breweries I'm doing this year, I've done before because they liked it so, so much. The ones that I'm not doing are either either had a scheduling conflict or, uh, or honestly, aren't around, right? Because there's just a few that didn't quite make it. But, but here's a question for you, beer related. Uh, Chris and I were talking about this sitting in a brewery in Fresno a few weeks ago, which is uh, I always go for the uh, heavy duty IPA. I'll okay. go for like a double IPA. Okay. And the reason I go for the double IPA is because it's double the alcohol. And I usually just drink one of them, maybe two of them, catch a buzz, okay. take a nap before yep. the show, yep. you know? So I'll go for the high octane. The, 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 the flavor to me is just neither here nor there between the single. By the way, you did and mention the, and the a double. nap in, somewhere in there, right? <laughs> there is a nap. There, yeah. There, uh, there shall how, be a that nap. That is how I feel about IPAs. I have, right. I have, if I have two, just find me a corner for an hour. But if you go somewhere in Utah or Denver or Utah, something like that. Usually, right. And even some other places you were saying, you order the double IPA, you know, 9.6, 8.2 yeah. wow. alcohol yeah. or whatever. They give you the smaller glass. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, they don't do it everywhere. I think that more than not now, when something is over eight, they're going to serve it to you in like a snifter. Mm-hmm. They're going to give yes. you. They're going to give you less because they want you to basically. The idea is that whatever I give you has this has generally the same amount of alcohol in it. So if something's heavy, they're going to put it into a snifter. If something's light, they'll put it into a you know a, lo- a big pint glass or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I like a glass. I think it was Boulder where that happened actually. Yeah, I think it, it was. was it, I think it was too. Where were you drinking in Fresno? What was the brewery? 
Was it uh, Tioga Sequoia? No, it was right next to the Tower Theater, like San yeah. something. Yeah, the, the, the rules were I had to walk back to the Tower Theater and take a nap. Yeah, that, so, yeah, that was the only That's usually mine. Yeah. So that's usually mine, too. whatever the place was that was right next to the Tower Theater. Yeah. But um, all right, so now Godfrey's here, right? Is that, is that what I'm seeing, too? All right, so then let's take a break. Zane will hang out. Godfrey will come in, yeah. and uh, we'll keep the party rolling. Let's go. Hey, it's Adam Carolla. Is your vehicle no longer stopping like it used to? Or does it squeal, shake, or grind when you brake? Don't miss spring brake deals at O'Reilly Auto Parts now through April 25th. You can get 15% off when you buy a set of Brake Best Select or Import Direct Brake Pads and two rotors. Brake Best Select and Import Direct Brake Pads are engineered for all driving conditions to restore and improve braking performance with application-specific friction formulas, noise-canceling shims, and low dust operation. Trust Brake Best and Import Direct to deliver better braking. Don't take a chance on your next brake repair. The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts will help you find the brake parts and supplies you need to do the job right the first time. Stop by your local O'Reilly Auto Parts today or visit online O'ReillyAuto.com. In celebration of Jim Carolla's upcoming 92nd birthday, here's a list of 92 things Jim Carolla has never done. Number 49. Renewed a passport. Just one of 92 things Jim Carolla has never done. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. Or got a passport. Zane Lamprey is hanging in. Godfrey. You. God willing has made it into the studio. Yes. It's going to be in Bakersfield at the Fox Theater coming you up April 23rd. And then uh, Tampa, the Improv. That'll be April 28th through the 30th. And the yes. Stress Factory. Go to GodfreyLive.com. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Thanks for having me again. This is cool. They say, Adam, want you back. I go, what? Yeah. I never do. I, I don't always think I get invited again. I always go, I probably screwed up. Well, really man. what happened is they said, Godfrey wants to come back. And I went, what? <laughs> I, yeah, I was like, can I come <laughs> no, back? No, I thought you were so funny on this Thanks. show. I mean, once, you, once you nailed, once it was evident that you were going to be playing Bakersfield, it's like, we got to have that guy on. Yeah. Oh, really? You know what I mean? I've never because been. What's it's the, the it's the gem of the. They say it's like Fresno's cousin. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, is it really like? I heard it's oh, like well, everyone's oh. like. <laughs> <laughs> Let me. Is it like disgusting or something? Yeah, no, it's beautiful. You'll love it. You'll want to explore <laughs> Look at your it. Face. Like, can I add a few days <laughs> long there? Real estate. Yeah, you know. you're never going to want to leave. Uh, Bakersfield. <laughs> Let me encapsulate Bakersfield <laughs> in one short Please. story and exchange right. that I experienced. Okay. I played Bakersfield, I guess mm -hmm. Fox Theater. Mm -hmm. I don't Sounds know where right. we played there. Anyway, mm -hmm. some years ago. But uh, drove out. You never know about traffic. Ended up getting there about an hour and a half early. Had a little time to kill. <laughs> Decided going to go fuel up the car before right. the show. Right. Pulled into the gas station at Bakersfield. Found a homeless person approach a minivan that was filling up with fuel. Wow. Put the head, put the homeless person, put the head her head in the window of the passenger side of the minivan that was filling up and said to the person, could you spare any change? And the person that was sitting in the passenger side said, I don't have any money, but lifted up a bucket of chicken they were eating between their legs and said, you could have a drumstick. Bakersfield. That's Bakersfield. <laughs> Bakersfield. That Welcome. is any given day at Bakersfield. That's like a that's like a Popeyes commercial, man. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like people from Fresno go, ooh, Bakersfield. Ba yeah. yeah. And then Bakersfield, they go, ooh, Fresno. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so, yes. But I, Bakersfield is Hank Williams. Hank Williams Sr. Buck Owens. Buck Owens. Oh, Buck Owens from um Hee Haw? Yeah. Yeah, because there's Roy Buck Clark, Buck Owens. Yeah. Boy, you're the only black man on the planet yeah. who could yeah, go not, right through the cast of Hee Haw. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I know you didn't expect it because person. I knew who Charlie Pride was. Oh. Charlie yeah, Pride was black. the one black dude during that time. My parents watched Hee Haw, WGN, <laughs> WGN, Hee Haw, Mini what, Pearl. What year are we talking about? Howdy, yeah. Mini Pearl. And there was Buck Owens, Roy Clark, and then Glenn Campbell would be a regular on there. Bam. 
Kenny Rogers, bam. Loretta Lynn, bam. <laughs> Tammy Wynette, bam. And Johnny Cash, bam. Yeah, my parents, <laughs> Nigerian parents, my father would be like, this is a good show. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the donkey would come, ah, Oh, right? yes. Charlie Pride is the only black, black singer, to uh, be, country singer. To be at, inducted. Until Hootie. Until up. Darius Rucker, he quit and went to some easier shit. Yes, <laughs> he was, smart. He was like, he was like, yo, at Darius. But no, there are other. There's a couple. There's there's Cowboy a couple. Troy. But what Darius Rucker did is basically the dude going, I'm gonna look. I'm a fair to midland swimmer on the dudes team, <laughs> but I'm just gonna identify as a chick and go over there and mop up <laughs> because I'll be the fucking bell of the ball if I'm the only black. Country it's singer. True. It's the truth. Bookings went up. Everything went up. That's it. <laughs> they were mad at first, but I'm like, that's Hootie from Hootie to Blowfish. So he probably got fans from there. But my thing is the country thing. Let's be real here. I love coming on these shows and spitting my knowledge. Mm. Country is late. It's just white blues. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Hank Williams and Woody Guthrie, they just learned from the black dudes. Right. And we're like, yo, you're this lady, you're a lady, my lady. I've been to uh, the Cleveland, I mean, uh, Rock, Rock and Roll Hall, Hall of, of Fame. Fame. And you, when you walk in, you can see the timeline of music. And it goes, black people first. Mm-hmm. Then the white man shows up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it gets all crazy. Right. <laughs> Elvis. And mm-hmm. Jane Ram- yeah, it's yeah. just that. It's all the and South. I don't know why they got so angry at it. Because I guess country is so related to like, you know. It's related mm-hmm. to like racism. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I watched the Dukes of Hazard, man. And wow. I didn't know when I was little, I had to ask my mom, I wanted to get that X car. How deep can you go into <laughs> the, the how deep can you, you go into the cast of the Dukes of Hazard? Okay. Tom Wopat, wow. John Schneider. Mm. Um there was um Kathleen Bach, who did the Daisy Dukes. That's where Kathleen the Daisy Bach. Duke shorts come from. I'll accept their character names, by the way. Well, <laughs> <laughs> now that was like impressive. Daisy, Daisy Duke. Duke and Boss Hogg, I forgot his name, but but he was a he was a, a very good character. Other actor. character names. And Waylon Jennings was the narrator, yeah, and he, he sang the, the theme song. That's right. Just a good old boy. Then they had never meaning no harm. They had uh, Cooter, <laughs> Cooter. Oh yeah, coo, coo. and uh, no, that's Cooter. And then they had the other guy, Enos. Roscoe Enos Pico Train. He was yeah, a, he was a trained musician. That guy. Really, he was like a really like Renaissance guy. The one who's like Roscoe Pico Train. <laughs> who's the guy who comes? Oh, source for black news. Oh, the black news. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Whenever I come on, you play that. You play that. Like, like Will Smith in uh, Boys, Bad Boys. Remember, he's like yeah. this. That's the way you drive. Whenever he drive, that's the way you drive. Let's see if we can do this. Let's say, say a cast of the Love Boat. Get ready, oh, Dawson. Gavin McCloud. Mm-hmm. Can you even participate Gavin, in this? Gavin no. McCloud, oh, no. um, um, Ted Lange is, Ice, uh, is Isaac. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, damn, I forgot. Who, Go, I know it was it. Gopher. I forgot. He became mayor. Fred Grandy. Right. He became mayor of some town. Yeah, or governor or something. Here, and that's yeah. John, Jack Jones that sang it. Love, exciting and new. Hop aboard. <laughs> The source for black news. They're <laughs> expecting <laughs> you <laughs> and love. Radio. What well, life's sweetest reward? Let it flow. Oh, it, it floats back to you. The love boat. Dun, dun, dun. Promises. Soon we'll be, oh, soon soon we'll we'll be, be making another run. run. The, the love boat. boat. Yeah. Promises something for everyone. Let's set, set your course, course for adventure. <laughs> your mind's <laughs> on the new romance. And, and love dun, 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 won't, won't hurt anyone. Anymore, it's an open smile on a friendly shore. It's love. Welcome aboard. It's love. Woo! Sponsored what by Crest. The fuck Woo. just happened. Yeah, Jack Jones, Adam. Yeah, yeah. Ask That's what we bring to this podcast. Wow. Ask me my kid's middle name. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's mouse, the, I don't know. That was the coolest, whitest vo- oh, oh. Jack Jones love. Oh, that yeah. was amazing. And then they would turn around like the guest stars would go. <laughs> yeah. I always wanted to be the guy to go, 
Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what? Fantasy I always, Island after that. You know what yeah. I always wanted because I watched the shit out of Love Boat yes, too. too. <laughs> it's, it's it's evident. Yeah. But there's a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I may have seen a couple episodes in syndication. I can't see, remember. You've seen a couple of them a couple of times. All of them. <laughs> and Gavin just kind of died. Like just. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, uh, okay. I don't have an album called The Best of the Love Boat. That You have to watch a Love Boat 7,000 times you to memorize to the, the theme. Yeah. But I've always said this. You guys tell me if you think this is good. I mm-hmm. Love Boat, so my, my childhood was miserable, a lot of unrequited love, nothing ever worked out. But I would watch the Love Boat, and in, and in all these 70s and 80s shows, mm-hmm. at some point, the guy, the lovelorn guy, would just walk out to the railings, and he would just yes. stand there, yes. and he'd just yes. stare into yes. the sea. And it took about 14 Mississippi for the chick to put her <laughs> yeah. arm on his shoulder and turn around and say, John, I can't yeah. hate you. I yeah. love you. And then they... Oh. Yeah, the heart scene. I wanted mm-hmm. to erect a railing in my bedroom in North Hollywood. <laughs> and then I would just go stand on it. Yeah. Waiting, I would just lean against the it. Girl. <laughs> because Still I waiting. had it in my head that if you're miserable enough and yeah. you can find some railing, <laughs> th- this person you're sick over uh-huh. is going to change your mind and she'll show up at the railing. And yeah. Love Boat, it only took about five or six seconds. That's right. It didn't matter how bad the relationship the was, was or what went wrong. Mm-hmm. You just you look forlorn. You lean against the railing. You stare at the open sea at night. It has to be right. at night. Mm-hmm. And then the person will show up in a beautiful oh, yeah. gown mm-hmm. oh, yeah. and explain why she was wrong. Yes. And then you'll make sweet love in the cabin. And then yeah. Captain Stooming sometimes will go, I see you guys have gotten along. Yes, <laughs> yes. Continue. Yes. And walk off. You're like, yeah, yeah Calvin, <laughs> uh, way to oversee that. Let me tell you the two, fo- <laughs> the two phoniest... Most unrealistic parts of yes. The Love Boat and... Um, Fantasy Island? No, Bewitched. Bewitched. Oh, Bewitched. I love Bewitched. Bewitched. I'll tell you the right. two phoniest parts. Love Boat uh-huh. was that every crew member memorized every passenger's name right. on a boat that held 2,800 people. <laughs> okay. yeah. They'd be standing there, and at some point, Julie would come by and like, Mr. Jenkins, yeah. Yeah. Look, 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 how do you fucking remember? It's a three-day cruise. She always had her clipboard. She didn't have to even she look at, at it. it. She just knew. Yeah. They knew every the doctor. They knew everything. That's the phoniest part. And the phoniest part of Bewitched it's not that you know she could move her nose and bring dingo, in Doctor Bombay or dingo, dingo, and Dora dingo. would come in. Do not list all the members of that cast. Dick, or, Dick Sergeant right, and, Dick, and Dick York Dick were York. They switched yeah, in between. That's right. Yeah, get ready with the Dawson. Get ready with the black and Come on, come on. Cast to be with. He said a fact. <laughs> would it be Richard York and Richard Sergeant? I don't know. <laughs> Black journalism at work. Ah! Ah! This is B- Roland Martin ain't even coming here. Radio. All right. Oh, my Lord. So, <laughs> the phoniest part of that, it wasn't summoning Genghis Khan or it wasn't anybody showing I was in a camel being blinked mm-hmm. in the living room. It was the fact that Darren would return from work yeah. every day about 5 30, 6 in the evening. He'd walk through the front door. He'd walk right over to the mini bar with the roller wheels on it, open the ice bucket, and it'd be brimming with ice. <laughs> Have you ever met that woman? <laughs> Have you right. ever ice. do you've heard of that woman? Where every day no. you just came home and there's a fresh pot of ice because yeah. you're gonna make a high ball because Larry Tate was up your ass at the office. Larry Tate. And she dutifully did it. Yeah. Like I couldn't even imagine. Pitching yes. that concept to a woman. I listen, woman, I work hard. And all I want in return is a bucket of fucking ice. <laughs> so it's about 4 30, 5 o'clock every day. Your job is to go to the freezer, fill that shit up, and when I need it heaping with fresh ice cubes, when I they'd be like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's never going to happen. But well, she looks like the type that would do that. She's kind of hot though. Oh my Liz god. Gullery was hot. And yes. I'm sorry, you know who beat that though? Mm. Oh, oh, I dream of Jeannie. Je- mm. Oh, my. Barbara Eden was smoke mm. show. Loved her, too. Oh, ding. Oh, ding. I, got a, Hagman. I got a boner ding. every time she called him master. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, I was like, oh. <laughs> and, that, and the theme song. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah. Uh, every day. And the theme song. Of information. This is B-I-N oh. on iHeartRadio. There you go. Ding. Different ding. master. Ding. All right. Yes. So here's. Um, oh, look at. Oh. She was oh, hot. My goodness. Yes. Can I tell you who who may have been hotter mm. than Bewitched? Ooh. And and I dream of Jeannie. 
A, lot of, a magical chick? I think I improperly prepared for this show. You did. There's a lot of 70s here. Right, well, one more, <laughs> yeah. and then we got Zane. Zane's yeah. got a trivia 60s? thing for us. Rocco right. Welch. When are you going to go? No, no, no. Mm. Elizabeth Montgomery played mm-hmm. her naughty go go swinging sister. That's huh? Right. Serena. That was, yeah. Bring, hot. Up the, bring up the picture. She, she would show up in a black <laughs> wig and play and her. And she liked to she party. Was hot. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, this, they were good looking. this is the single version yes. of, of Bewitched who likes to party. She's I don't showing even, her midriff, too. That is, I don't even know. Like, that is forward. I don't even know at the time whether. I knew her sister was her. Was sister. They would do that shit <laughs> that all the time. That was amazing camera tricks. All right, <laughs> Zane. There we go. Oh, oh man, that's what a fucking party going? right there, what Serena. What is going on? All right, Zane, you brought mm. some trivia. Yes. In. So here's the deal. I, yes. I have a, a podcast uh, that uh, Adam, you and Godfrey are both going to be on. Oh, awesome! Uh, it's called Crafts and Crafts, where I okay. sit down. And with guests and drink craft beer and do arts and crafts, mm. and then it's which, by overdue. the way, is is a lot more <laughs> difficult than you would imagine. People uh, have it's it's kind of interesting. You're kind of bonding over struggling to do something that's very easy, but having a conversation while you're trying to make something nice is a bit of a challenge. Mm-hmm. So I have a a six pack challenge mm. that is uh, six six questions that I ask a guest, and I try to. Uh, you know, write it to the guests. I want them to do a good job. So uh, there was a guy, Josh Server. He was on a show on um, on Nickelodeon called All, All That. that. Yeah. yeah. All right. And, and he, uh, I was like, he was from Chicago. Hey. I, I just thought he would know about like uh, Chicago movie trivia. And I start to go down my own rabbit hole and I write it about Chicago movie car trivia. Mm. And he bombed. And he said, yeah. he said to me, no one would know these answers. I will. Okay. No, I don't you, well. you can, yeah, chime in. Chime in if you want. All right. Okay. This is all and, on in WGN, risky business, Godfrey. what kind of car did Tom Cruise's father have that went into the lake? 928 Porsche. Yeah. Damn. That's what I'm saying. What color was it? <laughs> Black or blue? Sh- oh, no. Well, I, think, I think it was champagne. Damn. Or champagne. Good one. Oh, okay. no. uh, in the Blues Brothers, what yeah. kind of car did Jake and Elwood drive? Well, they drove an old, it was an old police car, uh-huh. but damn it. Was, ah! Was it a Cadillac? No. I'll even take, yeah, I'll take I'll the, the, the I'll Grand say, Impala. I'll say Dodge Fury. Yeah, Dodge Monaco. Nice. Oh, Monaco. You yeah. know your cars, okay. though. Yeah. Uh, in 16 Candles, what kind of car is Jake standing at when the family, the family cleared the, the frame? Well, that's a hard one. In 16 Candles, Jake. Bum, 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 bum. Jake was the one she liked? She's the one she liked, and then he's leaning against his car. It's oh, red. Oh, it's a Rolls Royce. Wait, no. wait, wait! Hold on, hold on. Godfrey, in the, nothing. In the hold Cadillac. on. Is it, sorry, is it too no. recent for you? It's not from the seventies. You don't no, no, know no, it. No, no, <laughs> no. Well, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm stumping you with eighties trivia. Ca- that's that's um Anthony Michael Hall, right? No, it was the guy who did. He, he did Vision Quest, and he did this movie, and then he kind of Anthony the, Michael Hall was in no, the sixteen. He was. He was in it, but this was like the the, okay. the stud guy. His pops Sometimes was my there's more than one guy in a movie. Michael Schofling. That's all. His pops was my manager. Sorry, they <laughs> went back. She went back to his house, right? So at the very end of the movie, it, it wasn't going to work, and then the family was going to church oh, okay. or something, and All then right. they clear frame. Oh, okay. It's an iconic All right. show. All right, you ready? Thanks. Yeah. Wow. Porsche 944. There you go. There you go. Wow. God damn, damn you. God, God damn, so damn it. <laughs> wow. Fuck all you guys. Look at that. Just watch wow. Look at that. Look at that. That's iconic. I Don't anyone Porsches. ever question me about anything wow. ever again. Ever. There you go. You, ever. You, you Don't ever on talk this about one. this guy or this saying. movie. I would, and he's I would fail crap. He's modest crafts. about it, which I think is what we all D- appreciate. Motherfucking minus student at North Hollywood High with this brain. There, wow. There, there are two more questions. Okay. Let's go. This is a You're a cinephile, man. In Weird Science. Oh, damn. What kind of car did each of the kids make for themselves? I think she actually, they made her, and then she made them each cars. You just right. have to name one. Oh, we don't want both? Jaguar. Well, yeah, 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 sure, both. Uh, he drove, gonna, gonna, he drove a convertible. Uh, we'll edit that out. We drove a convertible <laughs> Ferrari uh, Mondial. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yep, hell you Mondial, know, and then and the other one, you remember the other one? The Mondial was the was at the end was at the end, so that's the one that matters to me. Damn. Yeah. Is he Slumdog Millionaire?ing Us right now. The it's other. Amazing. It's amazing. Let's see. It, There's smoke I, coming it, out of his. I don't <laughs> know. How is he doing? Now we, we started. <laughs> Karnak. Is he, is he hurting himself? We started. Oh shit. We started with a Porsche 928. There but we go. That, 
that's what it is. That's, that's what it is. A portion hey, there you go. There they are. Is that the there? Hell did Fuck you know everyone. All and by the, the way, time. there's your blue. How dare anyone question me about <laughs> anything? Hell? And I'm talking about Last international one. affairs, wow. <laughs> Last women's one. rights, oh, I know anything. About that 944. We're going back to the 30s for this one. Whoa. Oh, boy. What kind of car were Bonnie and Clyde? Daihatsu Charade. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> wow. It was the first one. Damn. Yeah. That was good. It's yeah. all what Chicago movies, What kind of movies, car right? was... Body and Clyde shot in. All Chicago movies? You can, you can go company. What about French Connection? I, I, Is that Chicago? Popeye I think that's Doyle? France. No, no, no France. that is... <laughs> I, think, I think that is Chicago. Well, Popeye under, Doyle. Yeah, that, yeah that, what's, that, what's your, wait, what's your question? That what was, the car, what was the car would use in French Connection when he was chasing a guy under the L? Mm. It was a definitely Chicago. American car. Yeah. It was definitely probably a Ford and maybe a Ford LTD, but I don't know oh, that so much special. about that. That's a pretty good question. That's a pretty good one. Um, we don't know. If okay. Right. So Bonnie we'll and Clyde, there's a story about uh, Dillinger riding Ford or the Dodge brothers <laughs> about how much they love his car for you, for a getaway car. Mm-hmm. That's that's one part. So, who, the, so who did he write? Is you because you you've narrowed it down to two, either Ford or Dodge. It's I got to be Ford or Dodge. Dodge probably was a little more performance back then, but Ford was much more ubiquitous. But I'll go Dodge. Is he, is, you said Ford first. I said Ford first. Yeah, so we'll take your Ford. Man, it was man, a, a 1934 Ford Model 40B. Woo! You good, that man. I went, that Allegedly, I didn't know. cars that are your bought name, at an auction for two hundred fifty thousand bucks and on display at somewhere in Vegas. Damn, with yeah. all the bullet holes and stuff. Oh, mm-hmm. sweet. It's pretty Museum. amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. Gangster Museum. To, 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 see, to see that, I don't know. I guess I guess someone realized very early on. That, you know what they did? They probably paraded it around, like took it places to show this is what happens if you go against the law. <laughs> and then the car was kind of preserved. I you see know? why people fail your shit. That's tough. Oh, I No. Those are tough. This was, this was cruel. It took someone Ooh, he, with... That brain? He, well, wow. first of all, we're in, you know... Adam's office, and he does have 13 cars in his actual yeah, office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in the actual guy. office that yeah. we're in. And I've seen cars. all his docs. Oh, yeah. I saw I I liked you. the uh, Uppity. Mm. I saw the Shelby. Mm. I saw all of them. And then when I saw who made them, I was like, oh, shit, Adam. Then I see Mike August, <laughs> who was my first agent <laughs> at, at William Morris. I said, I only know one, one Mike. One, only one Mike August. That's all I know is one. <laughs> And that was my first agent when I first moved to New York City with James Dixon and his whole crew. James Baby Doll Dixon. D- Baby Doll Dixon. Zane, those are fairly deep cuts. No, they are. Yeah. They are. They, you but, know what? They, the thing is, is I know them because these are the ones that I know. You know what I'm saying? Like these, wow. like I knew these. I researched them to, to verify yeah. what I knew. Yeah, them. But here's the so thing. Easy. I knew those. I watched every episode of The Love Boat yes. growing up, and I don't even know the song. So like there's some Ooh. things that for some reason like resonated with me that I remembered and I didn't but but so I'll go I'll take Josh Server's side on this it took a car expert to like to actually get these right yeah. so I yeah. was, I was oh. cruel to him but you don't I mean yes I mean, I'm sort of a car expert but it's not like I watch the shit out of these movies it <laughs> right. really takes a movie expert who's paying attention no, or maybe cinephile. It's, it's, no it, but it takes a cinephile who's also an audio uh, autophile yeah, audio yeah. Audio yeah. because because you, you like I could show my wife the the movie and she wouldn't know what those cars were yeah. you know? probably wouldn't or, care. or even like my brother I don't think my yeah. brother would know the names of those cars but no she probably wouldn't care Okay. She wouldn't care. She wouldn't care for right. Sure. Yeah. Well, All right, Godfrey. Yeah. Want to try another theme? Yeah. What? Like which one? You take. Well, I'm trying to think of very. If you go to the 80s, yeah. you'll lose them. Facts you need alive. to be in the 50s. Facts okay, alive. we can go facts alive. You take the good. You take the bad. You take them both, and there you have the facts of life. The facts of life. There's a time you gotta go and show you're growing. Now you know about the facts of life. The facts of life. When the world never seems to be living up to your dreams, and suddenly you're finding out the facts of life are all about you. You. It takes a lot to get them right. Wow. Well, we're learning the facts of learning the facts of learning the facts. Learning the facts of life. Learning the facts of life. And Molly Ringwald was on that. That's right. The first. Did you see the remake thing of that? 
Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Black gotta play my shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got you. Ow! Every time he drops an all. Did you see like the remake they did? Like, was it last year or two years ago? They made it with a new, ca- with the existing cast, and they had some people. Yeah, it looked. They looked pretty good. It was good. It was good. It was good. They made that, and I think. I think Miss Garrett was had passed, and then they made the Jeffersons. Did you see that wow. with uh, they, Kevin Hart? They, they redid it. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, redid it. It was, it was, it was like, it was impressive. It was, it was really pretty good. impressive. Yeah, huh? it was good. It was that's good. that's oh, you. Oh, you got another. We, another do, we can do the Jeffersons. <laughs> we could do Land of the Lost. Land of the Okay, let's do the Jeffersons. Okay, all right. Doom where we move. Oh, you know okay. who sang that song? Neil By Sedaka. No, I would. Do you know the age difference it. between Wheezy and George? Mm-mm. What was he? Was like forty three, and she was in like, real life. Yeah, and she, I think she was sixty. Isabel Sanford, really? Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. But he just kind of like looked yeah, old. old. He right, mustache, he looked old. Look, uh, Sherman yeah, Hemsley. Yeah, yeah. All and, right, you ready? Okay, get ready, Dawson. I I met I met uh, Sherman Hemsley through Rich Voss. Oh, really? Yeah, he brought him to the cellar. And wow! He was like, there's Sherman Hemsley. Yeah. He was like, hey, he's a Rich Voss fan. Real random. Okay, edit. <laughs> <laughs> The power of information. This is beyond. Okay, ready? The lady who was the next door neighbor on the Good Times, Falona, is the one that sang the Jefferson's theme song, Janet Dubois. Oh, really? Yes. What? Remember Falona, uh, the next door neighbor? Work. Ready? Because truth matters. This is beyond. <laughs> no, stop saying facts. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> we don't all, right. all your facts. All right. Also, I want to say. Okay, ready? <laughs> huh? Well, Doom where we're moving on, on up, moving on up to the east side, to a deluxe, deluxe apartment in the sky. sky. We're, we're moving on up, up moving on up to the east side. We, we finally got a piece of the pie. Beans don't burn in the kitchen. Beans don't burn on the grill. Took a whole lot of trying uh, just to get up that hill. Dun. Now that we're up in the big leagues, getting our turn at bat. As long as we live, as you and me, baby, ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay, we're moving on up, moving on up to the east side. To a deluxe apartment in the sky. We're moving on up. To the east side, we, we finally got a piece of the pie. This is on Radio. Wait, I got one more. All right. Boy, the way Glenn Miller plays. Oh, wow. oh you want to do both? What part do you want to do? Oh, I'll, I'll do. Uh, I'll do. Um, you want to do? Uh, <laughs> you do Edith. You want to do Edith? You do Edith. I'll do her. Okay. I'll do Gene Stapleton. Okay. Ready? Uh, then I start. Right. Okay. Right. Boy, the way. Jim- Wait, I'm starting. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Boy, Christ. Uh, Will right. you start singing, huh? <laughs> Carol O'Connor, Boy, go for it. Boy, the way Glenn Miller played. Songs that made the hit parade. <laughs> Guys like us, we had it made. Just Those for were the, the days. days. <laughs> and you wish that you were there. <laughs> goyles were goyles and men were men. Mr. We can use a man, man like, like Herbert Hoover again. Again. Didn't need no welfare state. Everybody pulled his weight. G.R.O. LaSalle ran great. Those were the days. Oh. Dum, dum. <laughs> no, that was not a not count. <laughs> no way. <laughs> All right, Godfrey, you earned yourself a hell of a plug for that performance. Wow. Bakersfield coming up, Fox yes. Theater, April 23rd. Tampa, Florida coming up also at the Tampa Improv, April 28th through the 30th. 30th. Stress Factory, May 4th through the 7th. It's in uh, New Jersey. Yes. Godfrey Live. What's, what's your website? Where do people get tickets? My website is GodfreyLive.com. Did I just say that? And my, <laughs> and my, <laughs> my podcast is in because Godfrey We Trust. Matter. This is B-I-N Also, on- Zane, <laughs> Golden Road Brewery. That's coming up May 13th. <laughs> yeah. And you can check out his dates at ZaneLamprey. A hundred shows. A hundred shows and breweries. Check that out. Wow. Uh, Godfrey, Zane, uh, this has been a That's slice. Uh, Dude, thanks Godfrey, for having fun. me on time. I, came on, I got, I got a piece we'll of hang it. Hang out.
And until next time, it's time for Godfrey and Zane and Chris Ooh. and the cast of every 70s TV show saying <laughs> mahalo. Get your